Seventh Dragon is a very unique JRPG. The whole idea of Seventh Dragon is that it's your adventure and the game gives you complete control of how you set up your party. Each playable character in the game is fully customizable. You can choose how each party member looks, their name, voice, personality, and class. The amount of playable characters you can create makes for a very diverse cast. However, the trade-off for this is that while you have full power over how you customize your party, your party leader is forever a silent protagonist, and is more one-dimensional than most of the blandest protagonists out there. That being said, the way this story is presented, it works around this inherent flaw quite well. Seventh Dragon's story is very straightforward. You are recruited by the organization known as Nodins to help create the mythical item called the Dragon Chronicle to prevent the seventh true dragon from destroying the world. To do this, you must travel between the past, present, and future to slay all the other true dragons to complete the Chronicle. During your travels, you will meet a wide array of different characters who will help you on your quest to rid the world of dragons. And this is where the game makes up for the one-dimensional protagonist. Each side character has their own charm, from your co-workers at Nodens to the Warriors of Atlantis. Each one is unique and has their own personality that really stands out. It made me feel like I was actually fighting for a better future for all the people across the time zones. This story packs a lot of punch where it counts, and I won't delve too much into it as it is something you need to experience firsthand for yourself. Seventh Dragon's gameplay is that of your standard class-based JRPG. However, the difference here is you have complete control of how you want to build your party, and by the end of the game, you can have up to 9 classes to choose from to create your party. Keeping that in mind, team synergy is key. While I can't tell you which class makes the best teams, it's also best to experiment what characters make the best team for you. It's with this freedom I feel like the game truly does shine, as you can do an insane amount of class combinations in your teams when you master each and every class. You will spend most of your time traveling through different dungeons to get to the boss of each one. In each dungeon, you will encounter random enemies and dragons. The dragon fights are what you're really here for. Not only do they provide a nice challenge at the start, but they give an ample amount of experience and skill points for your character. Now notice I said at the start. A small gripe I have with this game is that, while there is a vast variety of dragons, a lot of the times early on it doesn't show it. I can only fight the same dragon so many times before it becomes a bit mundane. That being said, however, the overall game's combat and presentation is a lot of fun and enjoyable once you get into your own groove. The boss battles in this game are very challenging and will make you use all the strategies you have learned up until this point. What really ties this game together a lot of the time is the music. Every single track in this game fits the mood it's in perfectly. Whether it's the instrumental tracks or the lyrical tracks, the game's music really leaves a major impression. This is easily one of those games I can recommend solely for the soundtrack by itself. I can go on and on of all the things I loved about Seventh Dragon, but there were some issues that I had with the game the further I got into it. One issue was I never truly felt the sense of scale in this game. By this I mean I could never tell at times if I was underleveled or overleveled. Just because I was able to take out a regular dragon in three turns did not necessarily mean I was ready to take on the boss of that area. While this is offset by the various different strategies and skills you have at your disposal, it just felt annoying that the progress I thought I was making didn't make much of a difference, and I had to load a previous save and continue leveling up and grinding for better gear. Another issue that I had with the game that was much bigger than that, however, is how RNG-reliant a lot of the later battles can be. An example of this is seeing that bosses never adhere to any sort of pattern in battles, so you never know when the boss's most powerful attack can be coming. While yes, you do have the ability to counter some of these, the later you get in the game, the more luck based it gets to debuff a boss after they charge up. The buddy skill was made to break an enemy's buff, but there were many times later in the game where that didn't actually happen. If you can get past some of the RNG problems this game has, you have a surprise hit from Sega this summer. From its amazing soundtrack to surprisingly engrossing story, and a combat system that caters around how you want to play, you have a title that any JRPG enthusiast will want to have in their collection. And that does it for our review of 7th Dragon 3 Code VFD. For a more detailed and much more in-depth review, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com, for the full written review. I honestly strongly encourage you to do so. The full review is much more in-depth than what I could have gotten to in this video review. So if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section below, let me know what you guys thought of the review, and if you guys are picking up this game or not, be sure to subscribe for future reviews and Let's Plays, and also be on the lookout for my 7th Dragon 3 Code VFD Let's Play that should be starting the next day or so. And as always everyone, this is GammaLad, signing off. Oh.